the mystery of trees. Remember, King Jesus was walking and it was hungry. And remember when he gets to the location of where he wanted to eat, he encounters a fig tree. The fig tree was investigated by Jesus and he ended up saying that there was going to be a curse on that fig tree. He cursed the fig tree. And when he cursed the fig tree, he said that you will never bear any fruit anymore. And the Bible said that the fig tree withered away and the next time they saw that fig tree it was withered. There was something that happened with this fig tree that I want to talk to you about so that you can understand how everything that the Lord created has a voice inside of it. The fig tree was talking to Jesus. And a lot of people look at why would you curse the fig tree? The fig tree was actually cursing Jesus. Remember the Bible said that you reap what you sow. God is not mocked whatsoever man sow, that shall he also reap. Now this is God in the flesh. So God would not give this fig tree a harvest that it wasn't worthy of. Jesus would not render to this fig tree something that it was not entitled to receive. This tree was talking to Jesus. Remember I told you yesterday I was going to do a teaching and talk to you about how trees can talk. The tree was talking to Jesus. Saints, I want you to catch this. In Genesis, yes, the serpent was talking to the woman. But when the serpent brought her to the tree, the tree started talking to her. No, no, no. I'm not talking about you can read it in the Bible and see what the tree said. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying that the communication of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was unlocked telepathically to her after she gave heed. To the serpent. That tree was talking to her. Look at this here. Look what the word God said here. It says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. Saints, this not just what the serpent told her. This is the advertisement that the tree is communicating to her now. The tree is now taking over the conversation. Now the tree is conversing with her telepathically. God made trees with a voice in it. And watch this. I'm going to show you something that you never saw before. You say, well, prophet, well, how could a tree have a voice in it? Because the tree did not originate as a tree. It originated as a seed. My God. And God made seeds with voices. Seeds can talk. Did you know that when the sperm of a man, which is seed, goes into a woman's egg, do you know that the egg say, I'm a girl, I'm a boy, we twins. When that woman gets pregnant and the doctor says, we just determined that this is a girl, that's not the first time that the egg heard that. The egg heard the sperm speak and say, hey, 
I'm Susanna. I'm Jonathan. I'm Jeffrey. I'm Bilgram. You, I'm talking to you, man. Every part of your body has a voice to it. If you don't eat, why do your stomach start talking to you? You have heard the voice of your stomach. If you're at work, you forget you locked up in your work. How come your stomach talks to you and tell you, I'm hungry. We haven't ate. When are you going to feed me? How is it that a person yarns? Do you understand that your body is talking to you about sleep? Isn't it wild that the body could talk to you without you saying anything? Everything that God made, he, in, he hid in a voice in it. Now watch this here. You say, well, how can my body talk to me? Because the body is not the origin of the body. And watch this here. Man didn't come from the dust of the ground. Firstly, man came from the seed of the word of God. They came from let us make man in our image and likeness. So, so, so when you look at the body of a man, you're like, well, all men come from the dust of the ground. Now, actually, that was the second stage. The origin of man was a seed from God's word, the seed of the word of God. When he said, let us make man, that's where man came from. So the, 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 the truth of the matter is, it's half truth or, or it's partiality. When you believe that, hey, man came from the dust of the ground because that wasn't where man actually was formed. They was formed by the word, which is really the seed. So saints, you say, well, the earth, it came from, you know, water. Is, is, is un no, no, no. Water its origin is not even water. Water's origin is the seed of the word that comes out of God's mouth. The earth didn't even get the origin from just water or the earth. The earth came from the seed of the word of God. So everything that God made, its origin is seed. Where did the fish come from? It came from the water. No, the fish came from the seed of the word of God. Where did the water come from? It came from water. No, it came from the seed of the word of God. Where did the earth come from? It came from water. No, it came from the seed of the word of God. Where did man come from? They come from the dust of the ground. No, they came from the seed of the word of God. Where did the woman come from? She came from Adam. Yes. But she came from the seed of the word of God because God told Adam, let me make you a helper that's comparable for you. I help me. So when God spoke that, she was. God used the seed to cause things to appear. Now you know why you saw Yes, God promised you freedom. Let's, yes, God promised you a house. Yes, God promised you vehicles. Yes, God promised you nice clothes. But everything appears by seed. Whoa. Whoa. The mystery of trees. That a tree, its origin is not a tree. 
The origin of a tree is a seed that was planted and that was watered and it grew up to be a tree. A tree is the harvest of a seed. So when God made the garden of Eden, he picked the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life and other trees. And all these trees were created by seed. Now, if I want to take you real deep, why would there be a tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And you notice who speaks about this tree the most? The serpent. So who do you think the landlord was of that tree? Who do you think voice was hidden in that tree? Satan. God pits a tree that has the seed of Satan in it and tells Adam, don't touch this. I'm going to train you how not to do what Lucifer did in the beginning. I'm going to train you how not to do what the one third of the angels did in the beginning. I'm going to train you. I'm going to use you to embarrass them. I'm going to show them how they was never supposed to touch that thought. They was never supposed to touch that imagination. They was never supposed to touch that suggestion. They was never supposed to touch that possibility. They was never supposed to touch that potential. They was never supposed to touch that option. But I'm going to use you to show off how it's supposed to be done. The tree of life was from the seed of the word of God. The mystery of trees, even the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of life, the trees that was placed in the garden, all of them were made by seed. The secret of everything that you see on earth today is the result of a seed, including yourself. How do you not understand that a thousand dollar seed? It destroys spirits of poverty and sickness, destruction and fear. How do you not understand that a five hundred dollar seed? a $300 seed, a $2,000 seed. That when it is sown, it reaps harvests and benefits from God's word. How do you not understand that? The seed doesn't work. Well, how many times do you brush your teeth? How many things do you see with your eyes, your ears, where all of your eyes and ears are just harvests? Your physical body is a harvest. Because you started off as a seed from the man that slept with your mother. All your body parts, the fact that you could take a shower, the fact that you could walk on two feet, the fact that you could stand up, bend over, bend down, the, the fact that you have breath in your mouth to speak words. All of these things that you possess are simply the results of a seed that grew into a harvest. So when God places a sowing anointing on you, you're in the alpha of your omega well. When God puts money in your hand, you're in the alpha of your omega health. You're in the alpha, the beginning of your omega 
protection, your omega freedom. Saints, all throughout the word of God, in Genesis chapter one, what you're seeing God sowing, when they say the first day, the second day, the third day, this is all God sowing. He's sowing. By the seventh day, he rested because he had finished sowing. When you are sower, when you get to your seventh day, that is the recognition that the Lord is the one that give the increase. You get to your seventh day. See, your seventh day as a sower is when you come to an understanding that the Lord is the one that multiplies the seed. So the Lord is the one that loves a cheerful giver. So let me give him the best of who I am. Let me sow into him without fear, without grudges, without necessity, without worry, without anxiety, without impatience. Let me sow into him with gladness, understanding that he is and he is a rewarder of they that diligently seek him. So Genesis revealed that when you become a sower, because that's what God was doing. He was sowing. He was sowing the earth, sowing the water, sowing the fishes, sowing man, sowing, sowing. On the seventh day, he rested. It's a revelation that after you sow, you got to step into the seventh day. And the seventh day is where you rest. I think that's Hebrews chapter four that says that there remaineth the rest for the people of God. And you got to be diligent to enter into that rest. It don't come easy. You got to be intentional and have a motive. Because you have to guide your soul into the world of the word. The world of the word. The world of the word. You got to keep the word before you. Psalm 103 says, forget not his benefits. Forget not his benefits. Why did David say that? Because David know that there is a forgetfulness of the benefits of God. There's a forgetfulness. It said, forget not his benefits. The seventh day. The seventh day. The seventh day, so the seventh day come through faith. The seventh day come through cheerfulness or, or the result of you operating in that seventh day is cheerfulness, hope, perfect love that cast out fear, perfect love that cast out fear. I think that's first John chapter four. Now, you know, for you to be a sower, you got to step into the seventh day after you sow. You got to rest while God bring the rest of the story from your sowing to you. Your seed leaving you is not the end of the story. Let God unveil the whole movie. See, how many of you are, when you start sowing, you just watch the first 15 minutes of the movie. You haven't let the movie finish. At the end, there's a increase, a harvest. Psalm 115, 14 say he increased you more and more. When God was sowing in Genesis, he knew the end. He knew I'm gonna have fishes in the water. Look, we still got fishes today. Jesus did a miracle of five loaves and two fish. Think about it. The miracle of the fishes it would never been possible if God didn't sow. Wow. He sold the water. So Jesus would not have been walking on water to the disciples, showing them that dimension, if God never sold the water. Everything came from sowing. And when sowing came forth, harvest came forth. God loveth a cheerful giver. Let's look at that word loveth. That means that God enjoys. He's excited. He's ecstatic. He's enthusiastic. 
This is his standard. This is what he longs for. This is his dream. This is his prayer. For cheerful sores. People that love taking care of him with the revelation of what they're doing. I'm fulfilling my purpose. This is what I'm made to do. This is why I'm alive, to impress God with my cheerful giving. This is why he woke me up for cheerful giving. This is why he didn't treat me as the sins deserve. For cheerful giving. This is why he protected my past, protected the endangerments that were around me for me to become a cheerful giver. God loveth a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver, cheerfulness, it means that you have confidence in God's response to your honor. Cheerfulness means that you have recognized that the Lord is receiving a ministry from you. Cheerfulness means that now you are valuably giving God an encounter that's one of a kind through yourself, through your vessel. You're a vessel of honor. Cheerfulness is when you understand that this is why I've been given mercy. This is why I'm alive today. Because the Lord wants to receive from me. He wants me to become an investor in his life. People cometh to you now to invest in you because God has received you as an investor in his life. All of your investors come because you yourself chose to be an investor towards God. So now God releases the same experience you have become to him to invest in him. Now he sends people to invest in who? You. That's the life of harvests that God is able to take from you, use you. And now he sends that same experience to you. Now there are people that sent to you where you could take from them, you could use them. Harvests is really a promotion from God. And it means that God has elevated you to operate like him in the earth. The same way he receives honor, you become a recipient of honor. The same way he receives blessing, you become a recipient of blessing. The same way he becomes a recipient of your ministry of sowing, you become the recipient of someone's ministry of sowing. 